Hello! This week I'm continuing on my fairy project for the Renaissance Festival at the end of the month. I've already made the stays and the chemise. You can see the stays kind of that I'm wearing now. Um, we finished those in the last video so go check that out if you haven't seen it yet. But I can't just wear stays and a chemise to the Renaissance Festival. That'd be a little bit indecent because the chemise is transparent. So this week I'm going to be making some skirts to go over top of it. I'm thinking two different skirts. I have a poly shantung that has this pretty gold vine pattern on it and some stitching details in it that I think will be really pretty. And I also have a whole bunch of lace that I got from Joann's for some reason. It's like this red floral lace and I think that'll make a really pretty overskirt. So unlike the Witch Project where I made a rendering, I'm kind of limited by how much fabric I have. So I didn't bother making a rendering. I did some sketches, so good enough. Um, but for the poly shantung, I really only have enough to do a just basic rectangular dirndl style skirt. So because I had more fabric for the witch, I was able to kind of switch my plan halfway through and make it more of a circle skirt. I don't have the fabric to do that this time. So to utilize the full length of the fabric so I can make it as long as possible, I'm just gonna make it a rectangular gathered skirt. And so that'll be super simple. Um, the top skirt, I'm gonna be making more of like a handkerchief skirt. So it's gonna be a rectangle, but I want all of the sides to be lace. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit of fussing with the pattern on that because it does only have like a lace edge on the selvages, right? That makes sense because you have to cut it for like yardage and then wherever it like the two edges where it's been cut for yardage are obviously gonna just be raw edges. There's no like finished lace edge. So I'm gonna cut it into triangles where each like bottom edge of the triangle is the lace selvage edge and then stitch them together on like diagonals so that I can have a finished square where all four edges are lace. Hopefully that makes sense. I will be going over it later, so don't worry about that. Um, it's gonna take some math, unfortunately, but I'll just cut a circle out of the middle of that so that can be like my waistband. So a little bit more complicated than the rectangular skirt, but still, fairly straightforward, so hopefully that will go well. In addition to the skirts, I'm also gonna be making armbands. The pattern for the armbands, they're mostly just gonna be kind of like, um, not a rhombus, a trapezoid. It's gonna be kind of like a curved trapezoid. So you take your measurements for your arm and then you just kind of translate that into a trapezoid and then make it curved on the like top and bottom. I'm gonna go over that pattern later because I haven't actually made it, so you will be able to see how I do the math and like kind of figure everything out. Those are gonna be made from the same fabric as my stays, so they will be coordinating and everything is gonna be very shiny gold on this costume, um, which I'm actually kind of excited for uh, to make something like fun and shiny and like a little bit more fantastical. And to fasten those onto my arm, I'm gonna put grommets in them and then just lace them up. I'm gonna be making two pairs of armbands, one for my forearm, so like the lower arm, and then one for my upper arm. And I'm hoping that in the future I can use the lower arm pattern to make some gauntlets, but uh, <laughs> that's getting a little bit ahead of myself, so we're gonna focus on this project for now. These armbands are kind of inspired by Italian Renaissance portraits. I don't know if they existed outside of Italian fashion. I've mostly only seen them in Italian portraits, but I could be wrong and they could be in other parts of Europe. I just haven't seen them. They're not really necessary for this costume, but I think they're really cute and it's like a fun way to add a little bit more detail to your costume and also to cover up the elastic bands in my chemise. So my chemise is a puff sleeve, so it's got some interest already, but it does have elastic <laughs> to make the puff. So these armbands will just cover the parts where the elastic shows. I think that's pretty much it. Everything in this video is pretty straightforward. It's a lot of rectangles and a lot of geometry. There's a little bit of math, but it's probably the simplest part of the series. So I'm really excited to get started. So let's get going. <laughs>
For this skirt, I want to do a handkerchief skirt. So if you're not familiar with that, it's basically just you take a big square and you cut a circle in it for the waistband. However, I like to make my life more difficult than it needs to be and this lace has a pretty border on it. So I wanted to make all of the skirt edges have this border on it rather than having any kind of cut edge or stitched edge. So like if I were to just cut this as a square, then I would have this raw edge here and I would have to stitch that up. That's kind of bulky and also it's just not as pretty. I want this nice pretty edge, like I'll cut out all of the design from the net and I want this pretty edge to be on all of the borders. So normally a handkerchief skirt is like rectangle, circle for waist. Yes, that's pretty much all it is. But because I want the pretty design to be on all of these edges, essentially what I'm going to have to do is make my own new square and piece it all together so that I can use the selvage edges for all of these edges and then I'll just have to seam these together in a nice way. If I were to just use the fabric, these two edges or like whatever, two of the edges would be selvage and then two of the edges would be cut and that would leave me like some ugly raw edges that need to be sewn up on those two sides. However, if I can cut the selvage edges like big triangles into them, then I can seam them up at these points and then make it so that like the pretty edge is on all of them. So basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to cut all of this netting off of here and then I'm going to figure out how long each edge needs to be so that it is the right length and the right amount of gathering at the waist and uh, I don't know I'm gonna have to do some math so this is gonna take me a little while. <laughs> Okay, so I think I figured the math out. Sorry, this diagram is not the best, um, but I looked up a square calculator because I don't remember how to do geometry. But basically, to get the amount of gathering that I want in the waist, the total radius is gonna be 5.25 inches, and then I'll just accommodate for my actual waist measurement plus some gathering. And then the length on the diagonal part, I want to be 22 inches, because that'll be about two thirds of my total skirt length uh, for the base skirt. So with that total from the absolute center of this square to one of the diagonals is 27.25. And then uh, this is where I plugged it into the square calculator. I used the diagonal to get uh, these, oh, this side, that was wrong. Okay, so this whole side is 19.25 inches. And then that would make this part half of that. So. I don't know, what is that? That's about 10 inches, a little less. We'll say around 10 inches. And then that would make this uh, around four inches. Nope. That would make this around 4.75 and not 14, whatever I have written. Okay, great. <laughs> Glad we got that figured out. Uh, <laughs> I think that's enough information to start cutting. So I'm gonna start doing that now. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, let me know and I'll try to explain it more in the comments. If you have something specific you are not understanding, um, hopefully my math is right. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I just realized that my math was wrong after cutting all of the net off. So I haven't actually cut into the diagonal, thankfully. <laughs> but I realized that this was not correct because I've only got half of the diagonal here. So I actually need to double it. So that's 54.5. And then to get this side is 38.5 and not 19.25. So I kind of just accidentally halved everything. So now I've got it right. And basically I'm just folding this over and measuring a bunch of stuff and then cutting it. And I, I think this is right now. I hope so. So I have gotten all my lace cut out and it's now pinned together. So you can see that all four edges that it's like the nice pretty lace edge. Um, I've cut away all of the net and I've got my panels pinned. I've already started stitching this but basically they're all just triangles and they've got seams running through like 
this way. I've also marked out where I'm going to be cutting for the waist circumference. So that's this kind of circle of pins around here. So in order to make sure this looks really nice and doesn't end up with a lot of like ugly lace ends cutting through these motifs, I've cut around all of them to keep the shapes intact and I've just like cut the net around them. And to join them all, I'm just doing an applique stitch and that's basically you just go around each of the motifs and you do a little whip stitch and that makes it so that everything kind of like lays nicely and it looks like you have full lace motifs rather than a really obvious seam running where I don't know what that seam is. <laughs> so that takes a little bit longer obviously because I have to do it all by hand rather than just throwing it under the machine but it comes up with a much nicer result. It basically looks seamless unless you know what the <laughs> motifs you're looking for are. So I've just been working on that. These two are finished at this point. So you can see, let's see, where did they go? Yeah, see, <laughs> so you can see some of the back stitching I did where there wasn't a motif to bridge the stitches, but all around the motifs, they're just whip stitched down and it keeps it all really nice and secure. Because I had cut this one first, you can kind of see right there, there's a little cut edge of the motif. So that's where I had originally cut it because that was kind of an ugly chunky part that got cut off. I cut the same motif out of a scrap piece of lace and I just laid that on top. It's not exact because this is going to be getting cut here and this will be seamed into the waistband so I didn't want to have to deal with, I don't know, hand sewing and letting my stitches kind of run into that because if I cut it the wrong way it'll unravel. I laid it a little bit staggered but it's like you can barely tell unless you're really really looking closely at it. So that is what I've been doing and what I'm going to continue doing but it makes it so that all four sides have really nice pretty lace edge rather than just a straight edge and I'm really happy with how it's turning out. So once I'm done with stitching all of the seams together then I will be cutting out this part and then putting a waistband on it and that's pretty much it. Oh I'm also leaving this is going to be the center back seam um, so I picked whichever one <laughs> had the nicest laying of the motifs. So this one I thought was a little too chunky because it's got two laying on top of each other. This one has a little cut edge that's going to need to be covered as well. This one went pretty smoothly and didn't have any extra like chunky cut pieces so uh, I decided to use this as the center front which means that this one is going to be the center back. So because it's the center back I don't want to put a placket or anything on this because that will detract from the look of the lace. I'm just going to be leaving it open. There's not going to be a snap or anything there. Um, obviously the waistband will have closures but I'm just going to leave it open from nine inches from where this waistband will sit. So this is the circle again. It'll be cut out here and then nine inches from there I dropped down to here and that's how long it will be open for and that should be like plenty of space for me to get in and out of it. And then I'll just continue the lace applique all the way down to that corner over there. Hopefully that all made sense. If you've got any questions, as always, I am happy to answer them in the comments. Just let me know. Cool, let's keep going. So for the armbands, I'm going to be doing an upper armband and a lower armband. So for the lower armband, to pattern that out, I'm just going to be taking the distance from a little bit below my elbow to about my wrist. That will be my length. And then I'm going to take the widest width of my forearm at one end and the width of my wrist at the other end. And then I want a gap of about an inch and a half, so I'll subtract that. Elbow to wrist, I've got eight inches. I don't really want it to go all the way up into my elbow crease and all the way down to my wrist, so I'm going to say maybe six inches. Uh, maybe like five and a half. No, let's go with six. We're gonna go with six. <laughs> so I'm just gonna mark a line that is six inches and then I'm gonna put a parallel, perpendicular, not parallel, line at both ends. Can you see that? Okay, great. 
And then let's say this is my wrist end and this is my elbow end. My wrist is a little bit under six inches and I want a gap of about an inch and a half. So six inches minus a, an inch and a half if it's four and a half inches. And then four and a half divided by two is two and a quarter. So I want two and a quarter on each side there. And then at the top of the elbow, I think that was around nine inches. So nine inches minus that one and a half inch gap is seven and a half inches. Seven and a half is three and three quarters, I think. Oops, I didn't move this over enough. Okay, let's start over. <laughs> let's just move this line over a little bit. Okay, new line there. I'm gonna erase this line. Two and a quarters there. And then three and three quarters up to seven and a half. And then I'm just going to connect these lines. And then because these would theoretically match up, they won't because there's gonna be a gap, but you would want these lines to be able to match up. Right now they're gonna cause a like kind of weird obtuse angle. So what we wanna do is extend these lines down and then put the ruler on them so that you can mark a perpendicular line uh, kind of like that. And it doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna curve it out. But you want this to be a right angle because then you know that these two lines would match up really nicely. So what we're gonna do is just make that a nice curve there. And then to make sure that this line is gonna be good, still we said six inches. So we want to measure six inches from where we made the bottom there and six inches from the other side. And then we're also just gonna curve that right up there as well. This should also be a 90 degree angle from that side mark and it is, so that's good. There, that way these all match up nicely if they were to actually close, but even if they don't close, they should look like they would match up nicely. This will make it so that this forms a straight line around the arm since the arm is curved. Uh, you have to curve to make it look like a straight line when it's on your body. Um, and then I'm just gonna mark that I want my grommets, a quarter inch space. Maybe I'll put a bone in there. I don't know if it's gonna be necessary, but I don't think it'll be necessary. I'm gonna leave enough space for a bone just in case it is necessary. So I'm gonna just leave enough space for a boning channel. So that'll be three eighths of an inch because my boning is a quarter inch and we want it to have a little space. And then the grommets can be that half inch in here. If they're about an inch apart, then that will be enough. And that should be good. That is my lower armband pattern. And now I'm gonna make the upper armband. So basically we're doing the same thing essentially. I'm just gonna measure, I'm gonna measure how long I want it to be. I want that to be about four inches and so we're gonna mark a four inch line there. And the widest part of my bicep is around 11 and a half minus the one and a half inch gap, that's about 10. So I'm gonna mark the top as 10 inches. And then the bottom part is around 10 inches. So that's eight and a half. So four and a quarter on each side. And we're just gonna do the same thing here where we connect these lines. Like the green line in there.
So I'm pinning it so that I'm just on the outside of the marked line on the gold side and then just on the inside of the marked line on the cotille side. And I'm doing that so that when I flip it all around, the gold side will be slightly, very, very slightly larger. And the whole piece will wanna roll so that the seams sit slightly to the inside of the armbands. And we've got like a little bit of bubbling in here and that's good. That means that everything should sit properly and the seams won't show and the cotille won't show when it's all rolled around my arm like this. I think that all of these pieces went pretty well. I didn't really run into too many snags aside from messing up the math a little bit on the overskirt, but the dernal skirt went really smoothly. Obviously it's just a gathered rectangle, so not too much to actually mess up there, thankfully. The fabric was a little bit annoying to roll him, but I got it done anyway, so I'm really happy with how the overskirt turned out. I think it just looks so pretty and like it looks I don't know, like flowers, I guess. I mean, it looks like lace, so it doesn't really look like flowers, but I think it looks so delicate and it looks really pretty just over top of the skirt. And I think it's something that I can wear over other skirts. So I'm happy about that. The armbands, I will be able to wear with other stuff, but you know, they're pretty anyways. And they were very quick to work up. So all around happy with everything that I made. They do fall down a little bit while I'm wearing them. So I'm thinking maybe in the future, I will find some kind of coordinating elastic and use that to thread through the grommets instead of using the ribbon because the like obviously the ribbon doesn't stretch so it eventually just works its way down my arm and then I have to sit there tugging my armbands up but I think that's a problem for later Minji and current Minji is very happy with everything <laughs> if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up if you have another suggestion for keeping the armbands up besides elastic in the laces I don't know maybe elastic in the channels but I'm not opening them back up let me know in the comments if you liked the handkerchief skirt and how that turned out also let me know because I am very proud of it and I like hearing people's praise <laughs> <laughs> if you want to see the rest of the costume and my time at the Renaissance Festival, then please subscribe. And next week, I'm going to be making some fairy wings and the flower crown. So, you know, only the like cutesy fun stuff left. <laughs> and that's, that's it for this week. That's all I got. So I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.